Hello and welcome to this quick tip by BlenderDiplom.com. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and today I'd like to introduce you to this button. If you're using Blender on a regular basis, chances are at some point you enable this button by accident. For example, if you press Alt and Comma at the same time and all of a sudden you were not able to manipulate your objects anymore except for translation. Translation is the fancy word for moving. So you can grab them move them in all angles. If I press G, I can move them around freely, but if I press S, nothing happens. Same goes for R. So uh, I can also use the widgets to prove that I actually did put push the right buttons. There's just nothing happening. Okay, so my initial thought was that maybe this is so I don't accidentally scale my objects. For example, if I'm in edit mode, this button isn't there anymore and it also doesn't have any effect. It only affects object and pose mode. So I thought maybe some people don't want to scale their objects in object mode, but only in edit mode, because a lot of the time it's a good idea to keep your scale either at 111 or if you're, um, or at least all the scale values at the same value. If you scale something up along the x-axis, then it actually can distort your UVs, it can distort modifiers and so on. So this is just a side note. Okay, so why does this button exist if that is not the case? Well, let's move this object to the side a little and use the center of the, um, of the 3D cursor as our pivot point. If I now press S, you can see the cube is moving. Why is that? Let's just uh, switch back to median point, or bounding box center, and duplicate this cube. Now there's two. Alt D. So it's a link copy. Okay, so now I'm going to move this one, G minus two, two units back on the x axis, and this G two two units forward on the x-axis, so they're now two units apart. If I select both, you can see the median point where the cursor is, is right in between the two. If I now press S, you can see they're moving away from each other or towards each other. And that's a pretty nice option. If you don't believe me that this is actually handy, imagine that you, scale this down, Imagine that you have these cubes rotated somewhere in space. For that, I'm going to disable this for a second, rotate them somehow. They are now left and right, I don't know, of earphones or something. Now I want to move them closer together. And there's two ways of doing that. One is to choose the local direction. And now I can move this one here and this one here. Easier way at least in this point, at least in this example, is I select the both and scale them. So now they're moving closer together. Okay, so that's actually a pretty neat trick. And if you don't believe me, let me show you an actual example. What I have here is an odd construct. Let's just imagine this is a plank and this is some form of element that goes through the plank or whatever. It doesn't really matter what it is. The, the point is, let's say I want to scale the plank down. If you look at this uh, corner here, while I'm pressing Z, uh, scale S, you can see the value. So let's say I want to scale this to some value. Doesn't really matter at this point. Okay, so now the problem is these two are not at the plank anymore. Now I can go ahead and move them but that would be pretty tedious. Okay, so let me undo this. There we go. You could say, why don't you just scale it in object mode and parent them, which is exactly what I did right here. You can see the dotted lines. That means this is a parent and this is a parent. If I move this, they move with it. Because I want the um, plank to be smaller, first I press Alt comma to get the, the button disabled. That's why you see the problem this tool thingy scales with it. So what I want is the plank to be more narrow, but this thing stay the same. Okay, so uh, go into edit mode. 
And now I can press S and Y and you can see in the uh, bottom left, there's a value and I'm going to say 0.5 is about right. So I want exactly 0.5. So I'm going to press S, Y, 0.5. Okay, so now it's half as big and they are half, half as far apart. With these two, uh, let's just say they're a hopeless case. Can hide them because in this case, parenting just doesn't do the trick. Now, with what we just learned, I could go ahead and select these two objects, enable my lock, and then scale them closer together. Now I want them to be exactly the same scale as this. And this is why I typed in the 0.5 manually, rather than using the mouse and dragging it until I hit roughly 0.5. Now if I select the two, and press S, Y dot five, we would expect them to be exactly at the plank. Unfortunately, that is not the case. And the reason being, if I'm in edit mode here, and since they are two faces, the, the relevant parts are two faces, meaning this one, for example, uh, it will move exactly the same amount in the positive Y as this face will move in the negative Y. And uh, if we have a look at our two objects, I'm going to press S2, so they are where they where we left off. You can see that the median point in between the two is actually not exactly in the middle. Otherwise, it would be exactly on the x axis. So the distance between the two, it's not the distance between the geometry, it's the distance between this little orange dot and this orange dot, that is actually different. So the way we can make these correlate with the scale of this is the original, let me scale this up real quick, SY2 and of course edit mode, SY2, the original origin has to be where the target point is, where it's supposed to be. Okay, it's a bit hard to explain, so let me just change this. Okay, so I'm going to put this exactly on my plank I'm going to select these vertices, press Shift S, cursor to select it, and now the most famous keyboard shortcut in computing history, Control, Shift, Alt, and C, origin to 3D cursor. Now the little yellow dot is where it's supposed to be. Same with the sphere. If I now scale this down as 0.5, and now since those two have the exact same distance as did the faces here, and I scale this S Y 0.5, you can see it, pit, it fits perfectly on the plank again. So this would be a neat little option if you have to manipulate objects relative to each other. That is probably the main reason why this button exists. But there's one more bonus here. I have a couple of spheres. I just duplicated them and moved them around just a little bit. And now if I am going to put my cursor to the center of the scene and get the pivot point to be the 3D cursor again, if I scale this up, we have our scale and rotation locked. So if I scale this up, it moves away from the cursor. Nothing too fancy. But if I select them all, I can move them all away from the cursor so I can spread them out. And uh, this is already pretty handy, but let's get to the one added bonus I promised. The proportional editing actually works in object mode as well. It's been like that for a while now. It's probably not very common usage because I can't really think of many reasons except for this one and metaballs, but that doesn't matter. Probably other people have found the reasons. If I turn on the proportional editing, now I can scale this. And you can see a little circle appear. So if I press S, now I can move my mouse wheel to increase the area of influence. And then we'll take along all these objects that are a little further away from the sphere. Now you can set this to random. And what this means is it will scale them randomly. So the more I scale them, the more they will move apart. But each at the second I click S, each one will be assigned a random value. And the scaling influence will be multiplied by that value. I can change the value, which means I am 
changing the seed of the random factor by moving my mouse wheel. So every time I increase the area of influence, the random factors get recalculated and they're using the new seed. So if I want to quickly distribute objects in my scene, this is probably how I would do that. Now, unfortunately, they can't all start in the center of the scene because uh, zero times any random factor is still zero. So the scale would be zero. So you have to offset them a little bit, but it's still much nicer than uh, having to move them around, especially because you can change their pattern with the mouse wheel. Now you can see that they are all very uniform and my mouse wheel doesn't change anything. Reason for that is none of them is affected by the proportional editing because they're all selected, which means they all scale at the same factor. If I only select one, you can see my objects jump around. Except for the one I selected, that stays in place because that always gets a value of one. So there you have it, one explanation and two examples of use for this very strange button. I hope it's not as strange anymore and it doesn't confuse you and the next time you accidentally hit alt comma. This has been Frederik Steinmetz for BlendedDiploma.com. Thank you for watching and as always, please do try this at home.